right. Hi, everyone. We'll get started in a minute. Just want to welcome the folks who are here already. Hey, everybody. Happy Friday. <laughs> yeah, nice and rainy here in Seattle. <laughs> we have been really getting bombarded this last week. Yeah. yeah. So that's why we invited Ali on out here. To yeah, I brought the sun. That's right. Yeah. It is coming out today. Yeah. I got my sunglasses out for like 45 seconds on the commute over here. <laughs> I'll call it a win. I was happy. So hello to Chris, Hi, Chris. and Houning and Jose and Lisa. Oh, Lisa. Yeah, nice to see you all here. Lisa. Lisa. Yeah, welcome. Okay. Oh, Shangita, hi. Shangita just posted about the book. She just got the book in the Netherlands. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, she got there already. <laughs> yeah, huh? Got Wonderful. here today, too. <laughs> hi, Vivian. Nice to see you in the session as well. That's right. Ours came yesterday. In fact, all the rain. Okay, so that one was on our uh, front doorstep, you know, and we were a little irritated because it was just out from under the overhang. So it oh, was, was it sitting in a puddle. Oh, no. and we were sure it was going to be soaked through to the bone, but the bag, the bag held up. So oh, that yeah, was... it's that usually the the kind of waterproof bag. Yeah. yeah, no, no, no problems with it. No, it looks good. Yeah, after sitting in a puddle, it is awesome. It is a beautiful book. I mean, last time we were here chatting, same room. What was it, a couple, two, three months ago? Yeah. We were talking about my book that mm -hmm. came out, and now we get to be here talking about alleys. So. Yeah, I'm excited to see some. Uh... Some q &A. Yeah, great to see you, Shangita. Uh, if the chat is available to you guys, feel free to drop any questions or comments as yep. you, as uh, as we keep going. But we really wanted to have this be a fun and useful right. webinar today to talk about the book and also share a prompt with you. Just harness your creativity. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, because Ali's like, I don't want this to be some big, long sales pitch. So yeah. we're very careful about making sure when you're done... You've got some good tangible things to to take away, you know, some really yeah, practical pieces of advice and tips to to apply as you're trying to get unstuck in your creativity, which mm -hmm. kind of happens to the best of us, right? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I think it's just part of the process. You're going to be trying to do something. Something's not going to be working. Inevitably, you got to take a break, get some more feedback from someone, maybe push the idea forward a little bit so mm -hmm. you can get a little bit more clear on what's um, what the problem is, and then start ideating again. So yeah, getting stuck is just part of the process. And so sometimes we get like kind of maybe negative ab about that yeah. part of the process. I don't have the idea yet. I don't have an idea yet. Right. <laughs> but I mean, it's part of the, if, if you wanted to take the most efficient route, then you're going to just do what you normally do. Mm -hmm. But if you, part of being creative is taking a new route, mm -hmm. which m is not going to be efficient because you haven't done it before. By definition, so yeah. You're going to hit a roadblock. So I, I hope that this book just kind of shows people that that's part of the process mm -hmm. and being efficient is not part of the creative process because <laughs> by definition, it's, it's just not, you know, when you're describing that, I kind of, you know, cause we love to go hiking up here and mostly that we're staying on the trail, which is what they say to do. But I know some people that go off trail and it's interesting, right? Like you're kind of charting your own path mm -hmm. forward. Like you're just describing yeah. and that can be really like arduous because Risky. you get to a place where, you know, by definition, there's no path. You yeah. have to hack through the bushes. Get lost. <laughs> but the benefit is that sometimes you make it to a place no one's ever been or that the crowds aren't there. You see some brand new view you've never seen before. Yeah. So I guess that's kind of part of yeah, the creative risk. process risk, too. Right? There's a risk and there's a reward to deciding to go the creative route, right? Rather than the efficient route. So tell me a little bit more about this book. So, okay, why, why would you say you looked at this topic and said, I think I want to write a book about it? Yeah, I think it was because I used to be a data analyst and I was just kind of, you know, running SQL queries and using a software tool. Fun. Yeah, very <laughs> fun. And you know, it pays the bill, so whatever. It was okay. I just felt like there was something else missing and I kind of wanted to be, you know, express myself a little bit and do new things. Mm -hmm. And I started reading books and listening to podcasts about creativity, but they're all like talking to artists, mm. you know? So it's like, um, you know, how to be creative as an illustrator or a musician. And it's like, I just, you can grab bits of that to pull into your own practice and it's helpful, but it's, it takes longer, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like not as useful because you have to translate it through your own lens. So I was just like, I really want a book that's specifically about the creative process 
from the perspective of a data person. Hmm. So how do you bring that into um, your work as a data visualization person? Or um, I think the data-minded people, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but data-minded people like want something to do. <laughs> you know, like just tell me what to do. Yeah. And there's no formula, what but like, steps. yeah, it's just like, tell me like what I should be looking for. Tell me like this plus this plus this. And then I can, you know, it's inefficient, but you know, at least I have something I can try. Mm -hmm. So that's what I wanted to do is just give something for people to, to try to do and get active in their creativity rather than like having to wade through like all the creativity advice for mm -hmm. artists. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> so yeah, I can, I can kind of relate. I mean, if I'm not an artist or musician, it might be harder for me to take that book about how to write a great song mm -hmm. or how to paint using watercolors. That's not what I'm trying to do, but some of those ideas or thought processes or techniques might actually be helpful for me. Yeah. I just you now you have would to need to make the translation. Yourself. So that's what you're trying to do, kind of bring some of those ways of thinking into the data space mm -hmm. for someone who's trying to work with data. Yeah. And when we say work with data, do you mean um, just making charts or? Yeah, I think communicating in general mm -hmm. with data. Because, I mean, as you know, sometimes you need a chart and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you just right. have a figure and or maybe you're comparing two figures, but just communicating information in in creative ways. So it can be a data viz, but it also doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. um, but mostly just like working with information and communicating it to other people yeah. is the hard part. And I'm just like, was so tired too. <laughs> like all the Steve Jobs quotes mm -hmm. it's like, or like Einstein and people just like hold up these, oh. the the like top 1% of, of mm -hmm. creativity. And you're just like, it is inspiring, but it's like, how is little old me supposed to put it in my work, right? Like we have such a high standard of creativity. Like we have to be the next Steve Jobs or why even bother, so, but it's not true. And that's, so that's sort of a big topic you tackle in the first section, right? Mm -hmm. Which I think is care. So yeah. you really help remap people's thought process around what does it mean to be creative? So tell me a little bit more about that. Like what was the, the misconception or the myth that yeah. you saw out there about creativity and how did, you know, thinking about it differently help you make some more progress? Yeah. Uh, first, I was trying to define creativity because like, well, what does creative even mean? It kind of like we use it kind of as a synonym for artistry sometimes mm -hmm. too. So that's also confusing. But the definition I liked the most was saying creativity is something that is new and useful. And you might not know how it's going to be useful in the future because you know how sometimes you do something it's a bit of an experiment and you're like oh that was a waste of time but then six months later it's like oh actually that thing that I did I can use that in this thing and it actually works so it, the useful part is kind of tough but it has to be new and useful and I think sometimes uh, we say things that are new are creative but I feel like that's that's almost like a cop out. It's like, it was new. Was that creative? I don't know. It was just new. <laughs> so to me, something that's new and creative is, or new and useful is what something is, makes something creative. And the big thing that I uh, found was that there was this research by two researchers called, uh, their last names were Kaufman and Begetto. Mm -hmm. And they were also frustrated about like, oh, you can only do Einstein level creativity. <laughs> <laughs> and in order we to get credit for yeah it. in order mm -hmm. to get credit for it so they came up with this model where it was mini c creative acts um where that's where you're just learning learning things yourself and that's still creative um and uh little c so maybe you are experimenting and something could be useful to someone else or maybe it's just useful to you uh pro c creative acts that's when you're doing your professional life mm -hmm. like maybe you make this dashboard that has like a combination of charts that no one has used before and it's useful mm -hmm. to your whole company that's professional pro c creative acts and then you have big c and that's like einstein steve jobs you know and mm -hmm. some you know maybe we can get there but that really shouldn't be like our main point of doing creative acts mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. you can have these little creative acts that build on each other and really i think what we're trying to do is um push our pro c mm -hmm. creative acts forward so we can make an impact uh in our careers and maybe even personal life so that's kind of a misconception that i really open the doors to me like oh even if someone else has done it before mm -hmm. and i did it that doesn't mean I wasn't creative. Like I was right. still being creative. It's new for me. It's new for my users. I stumbled on it. 
sure someone else has done the same thing, mm -hmm. but there's still creativity involved in that yeah. discovery process for you. It doesn't have to be so novel from a universal perspective right. where no one has ever thought of it or dreamed of it mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause then, like you said, that just makes creativity feel like something that's just not for me. Yeah. Right? You know, just, that's not going to happen. And so it's easy to feel defeated and then just fall back on not asking ourselves to just take one small step, which may actually be really Yeah. Helpful. And then they build, they build on each other, all the little mm -hmm. steps. All right. So I want to hear about a story. So mm -hmm. Tell me about a time where you used some of the techniques in the book, you employed them in some way to come up with something that you think was really creative and cool and helpful. And what can someone else learn from that, that example for, yeah. for your own portfolio? Yeah. So one of the prompts that I wanted to share today is called the CTR prompt. And it's a prompt that I came up with because uh, I know that you all have probably been in the same, a similar situation as me, where like, especially when, at the beginning, when you're trying to make data visualizations, you pick like a sample data set and then you visualize it and you're like, oh, this is interesting, but nobody really cares. <laughs> so, they're like, there's something missing. Like, how do you turn like something that's just interesting mm -hmm. to something that's meaningful? Mm -hmm. And people are like, oh, that, that means something to me. I'm going to share this with my friend or my spouse or something. So how do you kind of flip that switch to find something, take something from interesting to meaningful? And I found the answer by interviewing a lot of data journalists and uh, graphics editors. Mm -hmm. They kind of helped me see that you you need to make sure that you're focusing in on the conflict. What is the timeliness of this thing? Like, why is this important now? Why should I pay attention now? And like some kind of resolution. Where can I find more information? CTR. What can I, yeah, CTR. Conflict, so, timeliness, resolution. Yep, yep. And one uh, uh, kind of hard lesson I had was back in 2017, I um, was a stay-at-home mom and I was out of the workforce for about a year at that point. And I was trying to find things I could do data related that I could do from home. So I was pitching local magazines and stuff, these data stories. And I pitched one magazine, uh, the story about what people in the city were Googling more than other people in other cities. <laughs> and I was like so excited because I was like making dinner and then the editor emailed me and she was like, oh. we want your story. We're going to buy oh, your story. Cool. Yeah. So, <laughs> It was like $150. It wasn't like a windfall, Still, but right. I was like, like yes, I did it. Like, so <laughs> my story, like I'm doing it, I'm doing it. And then like um, a, a couple hours later, she emails me. She's like, oh, can I call you? And I'm like, hmm, that's it not good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so she called me and she's like, oh, I'm so sorry. My editor is actually killing the story because he's like, you know, it's is interesting, mm. but what are people going to do with this information mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, that's interesting. We Google this more than other people, but like, what? Who cares? Yeah, who cares? Mm -hmm. <laughs> she, she said it a little bit nicer than that, but okay. basically, yeah. who cares? I'm cutting through the chase. So, yeah, so <laughs> I, I, I felt, I felt really bad, but like, I uh -huh. could I couldn't defend the story. I was like, sure. yeah, you're right. Like, that's who cares? Point. Who cares? Um, other than me. Uh, and so I was like, ah, it, it reminded me again of this thing, like the story is missing something, right? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. it's interesting, but it's not meaningful. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so then, you know, um, uh, interviewing these, uh, graphics editors and stuff, I slowly, uh, put together the CTR prompt. Mm -hmm. So maybe I can show you kind yeah. of it in action. So just hear, hearing out. about it is one thing. Right. <laughs> we have a question that'll come in. We'll get to this too. Okay, yeah. Samuel. Thank yeah. you, Thanks Samuel. For, yeah, you we'll guys, right back to that. Yeah, if you want to post <laughs> questions too, yeah. I'll make sure. Yeah, use the Q&A because the chat's not enabled. Yes, for, yeah, we thought we did chat. that, but next time. All right, so CTR prompt. So we talked about this. So start with your observations. Mm -hmm. So when you're exploring your data set, you probably notice some sort of outlier pattern or relationship. And it's okay if it's obvious at this mm. point, like, oh, you guys Google this more than other cities. That's obvious, right? Or not particularly meaningful, but it's okay. Like start Seattle Google's, why is it raining more than other yeah, cities? Yeah, should okay. I bring an umbrella? <laughs> <laughs> so it's okay we, if it's obvious. We stopped Googling that a long time ago. <laughs> just bring it, just bring it. Um, so start with your observation and then think about, okay, well, if this is true, then what's the consequence or who is affected? Mm -hmm. 
And then timeliness. Why does this matter now? Or like, what could you compare it to that is meaningful or mm -hmm. um, like quality is coming up or something? Yeah, it's timely. Yes, yeah, so you can to... connect it to something mm -hmm. that is timely. So maybe like mm -hmm. an election is mm -hmm. just inherently timely because it's, yeah. it's coming. Um, but if it that you don't have something like that, maybe you can compare it to something that is timely. Mm -hmm. So the timeliness is like a huge thing for for, for the journalists. For sure. yes. Yeah. Why is this? Why should people matter now? Mm -hmm. I actually found that that's that's important in business too because oh. there's so many things to think about and care about. Yeah. You know, why is an organization caring about one specific metric in yes. this moment in time? Is there some competitive reason? Is there some environmental reason? Is there a time is there reason? A problem? Like something's happening right now. Right. Is there some like a product launch coming out or competitors did something in the marketplace or whatever like, you know, uh, I don't know, a recession is just hitting or uh, cycling out of it. So yeah, yeah, that question around like, what's the situation in this moment is such an important one for this process, it sounds like. Yeah, and I think it's, you know, it just revolves around like people are in business mm -hmm. and people are reading the news, right? So this whole thing is, it's meaningful to people. Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing. People, we decide if something's meaningful. And so the thing that matters to people mm -hmm. are conflict, timeliness, and some sort of resolution. So like, that's nice, but what can help? How, hmm. what am I supposed to do with this information? Like, can I take an action or am I supposed to be looking for more information? So this is, this is the, the kind of brainstorming exercise that I go through. So I start with something obvious and then I just brainstorm uh, these, these three things, conflict, timeliness, resolution. So let me show you an example. So I wanted to remake the library receipt because I <laughs> love the library. And if you know me, you're probably tired of hearing me talk about it. But I just love the library because I love going there and just being able to kind of um, learn anything that I want to learn. Mm -hmm. And I was there recently. And if you see that the uh, receipt on the left is the uh, receipt that I got by accident. I like I accidentally clicked print receipt rather than no receipt. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at it and you can actually see that. Uh, it shows how much money I've saved mm. in the past year by going to the library. <laughs> and I thought, okay, that's cool. But then I was thinking, don't I already know that the library is free? Mm -hmm. Like, is that really going to make me go to the library more? I mean, I don't know. I know some people like it, mm. but I just kind of felt like it was missing the mark. Like, mm -hmm. I just, there's something there, you know, mm. I just couldn't shake the feeling like, ah, there has to be something. You're not going there to save money. Yeah, because I already know. You can check out a book for free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So am I trying to like rack up dollars? It kind of reminds me of those water bottle things, you know, when you like put your water bottle in. Yeah, you've you saved. have saved that yeah, two million whatever gallons. It's nice, and you're like, right. What it's am I doing? A, with it just that? becomes a big number at some yeah. point, right? Yeah. So I just felt like there has to be something. I wanted to do something data viz related, but you know, it doesn't have to be. But I wanted to do something data viz related as a challenge. Like, what could I put on this receipt that would make someone want to go back to the library? Like, maybe they were already there. They printed this receipt. Like, what would draw them in again? And you know, thinking of that thought is kind of like, oh. Like you get frozen, like, oh, what's the creative idea? <laughs> think of something, think of something. No pressure. And I don't like that. So I want a prompt. I want a prompt. So I pulled out the CTR prompt. So I thought, okay, the obvious thing is that the library saves us money. The conflict, so who's affected? Well, there's no monetary barrier to getting information. Mm -hmm. And timeliness, well, inflation here, especially, I don't know if where you are, but here in the U.S. is really high right now. But getting a book at the library, still free. No it's not, yeah, no zero times 8% <laughs> is still zero. So. <laughs> so timeliness, you know, related to inflation, hey, this is, this is still a free resource. So something you can do is maybe this is a good time for more free events at the library to draw people in, save money on books and maybe some entertainment. Like um, maybe on the receipt, it says, hey, there's a craft workshop next week. So you're like, oh, I'm going to come back because mm -hmm. uh, that's something free I can do <laughs> and not, not pay for it. And it kind of reminded me of like when you have small kids mm -hmm. and you want to get out of the house, but you don't want to go to a restaurant because they're not going to sit at the table <laughs> for very long. You don't want to go like to some museum where you got to pay 20 bucks a head or whatever. So I went to the library a lot, mm -hmm. especially in the winter. And I just loved 
I loved just having a place that we could just be, mm-hmm. you know, like mm-hmm. they could just Hang play. Out. Yeah. They mm-hmm. could play with blocks. They could play with puzzles. They could go to story time. They could read books. And it was just a really nice place to be. And um, it kind of starts to kind of shape your identity almost hmm. as someone who goes to the library. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was kind of what I was thinking as I was going through this exercise. And then I took a break because this was a good brainstorming exercise, but you do need to take breaks so your brain mm-hmm. can start thinking of things. So I was putting my daughter to bed later uh, after doing this, and I uploaded a chapter book to her Kindle, mm-hmm. um, and I showed it to her, and she was like, oh, I'm I'm not really a chapter book person. I'm a comic book person. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, she's already like mm. decided on her identity as a reader, <laughs> but... But then that made me think of um, like a bar chart. Um, Mm -hmm. Like if she's, she probably checks out a ton of graphic novels and comics. Wouldn't it be cool to be able to see like out of everything you've checked out this month, 90% are graphic novels. Yeah. You could see by genre. Right. So I was like, oh, that's kind of a good idea. So I I sketched it out. Wouldn't it be cool if you printed a receipt and it had this like Uh, little bookshelf. bookshelf. Yeah. It looked like a bookshelf. And then the spines had the genre on it and it showed percentages. And uh, I thought that might be kind of cool. So I pushed that idea forward a little bit by sketching it. And then I did some research and fun fact, the library does not keep track of what you've checked out. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Really? (laughs) Yeah. You know, for privacy reasons, which is something. Uh, Yeah. But you know, like, all right, well, that doesn't really work because you would, it would only have to be, they only keep track of what you've checked out right book. now. Yeah. So what oh, you currently receipt. have checked out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, don't they know what you have, have what you, what you, what you owe them back basically. Yes, uh-huh. exactly. So like, all right, well, that's not going to work. <laughs> and you know, that's the thing with creative ideas. It has to be, you know, you can have a good idea, but logistically, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So um, the other problem with this one is I was just thinking, it's sort of backwards looking. Hmm. Like mm-hmm. this is what you've checked out in the past. Mm-hmm. Does this really get me to the future? So, okay, let's let's do the CTR prompt again, you know, because mm-hmm. you can do it as many times as you want. Instead of thinking about the library saving us money, now I'm kind of on this genre uh, uh, kick. Mm-hmm. So, okay, let's kind of do it again. So you're following away. Yeah, I'm kind of mm-hmm. like just following like the little thoughts mm-hmm. that and like the little strings of curiosity. Like, mm-hmm. oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. So, okay, let's do it again for genre. So like my daughter, she tends to check out books in a few of the same genres mm-hmm. or maybe just one. <laughs> and I think a lot of us do that too. Mm-hmm. Like when I was writing the book, I would always go to the writing section <laughs> to get mm-hmm. books about being a writer and an author. Um, so yeah, people tend to be uh, checking out the things they like. You know, that's just that's a normal human mm-hmm. human thing. Conflict. Well, what is the consequence of mm. that? Well, you gravitate to the thing you always gravitate. Yeah, to. you miss other perspectives, mm-hmm. or maybe different types of writing, or different knowledge. So it's good to to branch out, right? Why is it timely? Well, I think mm-hmm. we can see, especially in our social media world, it's we're all in our little bubbles, our yeah. little algorithm bubbles. Echo, yeah, echo, echo chambers. chambers. Mm-hmm. So that's that's not good. That's not something we want to do at social media or at the library, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Resolution. So I was thinking, well, you could actually just literally walk around the library and just go mm-hmm. down different aisles and see what's popular in different sections. And thinking of that, I thought, oh walking around the library like what if we actually had a little floor plan of the library and then it it colored in the section um that where you checked out a book this time so Mm -hmm. you can kind of see like where you were and where you weren't Mm -hmm. so I showed I I mocked this up and um this is the uh uh floor plan of my library and I showed this to my daughters and they immediately started because I wanted to start see, looking around. Yeah, right. They actually started reading. Oh, everything. I wonder what's in the mystery section. Oh, I wonder what's in the cooking section. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they were like reading down this fiction list, this part right here. And thinking them to themselves, before. is there something in there that might be interesting to me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, my my eight year old asked me what literary what meant. Does it mean? Yeah. Because this is a literary fiction section. So I actually didn't really know. So <laughs> so we both learned something. Okay. But... It's like it's like hundred percent Jane Austen or something. Right? <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. <laughs> probably in historical not uh fiction. That was that was cool too. So it was just like historical it fiction. started a conversation mm-hmm. right. about what else the world of the is there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you 
the cool thing also about libraries is that even if it's kind of like an old building, you kind of get to know your own library. Mm -hmm. And especially as a kid, I remember like, you know, like the little nooks and crannies that you like to sit in right. and the spots that you're always treading. Yep. So it might be kind of cool to see, oh, over here in the huh. section I never go in, mm -hmm. that has this kind of thing. Maybe I'll go check that out next time. And then I also added this thing about maybe coming what's soon. coming soon. In the areas you do seem to show yeah, interest in. Seem, so it's kind of like it's... What's coming new in those areas. It'll anticipate mm -hmm. what you like and... Giving you reasons you, to come back. Because you come back, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then it's also educational because it kind of shows you what else is there without you having to go look for that yourself. So I thought this was a cool starting point. I showed it to a couple people and it was a bit mixed. Some people <laughs> thought it was creepy because... Like, you know, like you're following me? Yeah, the oh. library is following me, Yeah. <laughs> And maybe, maybe, uh, you know, like if you go to the library, like, you know, I get a lot of self-help books. Maybe I don't want everybody knowing that I'm getting self-help books. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I get that. But, you know, like every idea that you have, it doesn't have to be, you know, a knock out of the park. Maybe me doing this, I'm going to have an idea later for something else. It's like, oh, I had that one experiment about a floor plan mm -hmm. on a receipt. Maybe that's going that I could use it on this project instead. Or more likely I share it with someone else and it makes them think mm -hmm. of an idea like, oh, we could just tweak it a little bit like this, or this makes me think of this. And it's just kind of uh, snowballs and other yeah. people can do things. And it kind of jumps around a bit too, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe even goes into hibernation Yeah, mm -hmm. in a way that isn't necessarily such a terrible thing. If we require all these ideas to be useful and fully <laughs> baked right away. Yes. We're just going to get frustrated and disheartened. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. If you expect to only share perfect ideas, you are just literally never going to share an idea. <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe like it's one true. every 10 yeah. years. And I think that's why a lot of times I can say myself too, you just kind of keep it to yourself yeah. and feel maybe overly self-critical of it. Mm -hmm. But if you give it the, the opportunity to see the light of day, it yeah. might have a chance to morph a bit with yeah. some other conversation or some other scenario that pops up. And so you're just kind of continually like nurturing these ideas, right? And yeah. planting them. Yeah, and... give them, yeah, like little seeds. Give mm -hmm. them a chance to grow. Give other people a chance to um, build on it. It's like just just collaboration with people. I feel like that's some people's secret sauce mm -hmm. is to just be collaborating and um, playing off other people. I like the prompts because you can kind of do it yourself, but like, if you want to do it on steroids, mm -hmm. like do it with other people Get because, together, yeah. like a project team or something, mm -hmm. Hey, me and these other folks were working on, I don't know, a report for the company meeting or a new dashboard. Um, so together we can say, okay, let's try this. Yeah. This prompt. I'm thinking of a client I'm working with right now. We're building a Tableau dashboard for them. And I'm asking myself, did I really get a good feel for what the conflict was? Did I really, mm -hmm. did I really get that information from them? Or was it just, well, what's, what's the information you're trying to show instead of what's the problem you're trying to solve? What's yeah. The, yeah. Like what's the problem here? What's the, mm -hmm. the consequence? And why does it this? matter now? Like we can talk about lots of things to put on a dashboard. Why is this a topic you're thinking about in this moment? Right. What right. else is happening in the business today that causes this to be something that matters. And sometimes people forget to tell you because it's so mm -hmm. obvious to them. Like right. I know, I know this thing is coming up, but I forgot to tell Ben <laughs> and he right. didn't ask. So <laughs> CTR conflict, timeliness resolution. Yeah. How many, uh, so that's one of, of a handful of yeah. those prompts. Mm -hmm. Just give me a little bit of feel for how many are there? How did you organize them? Yeah. Yeah. So there's 10 prompts. The first one is part of the introduction is just like a, a little exercise to get you to think about like what being more creative could do for you. Mm -hmm. And then there's three main sections. And then, so there's three prompts in each section. The first uh, section is care. So caring for your creativity so that you don't burn out. Mm -hmm. You can perform creatively even when you're in a time crunch mm -hmm. or maybe you're, you know, just in a creative winter where things are yeah. tough in your life or you're just tired or whatever yeah, it can be religion it can be energy level dependent yeah. right mm -hmm. yeah there's a lot of things you know because we are human so yeah. things that you can do to care for your creativity there's three prompts there and then um coax so three prompts like this so ctr is one of them mm -hmm. how to coax out your creativity give you something to do so you're not just like waiting around for that lightning strike yeah. <laughs> well i want to come back to that in lightning. a minute that can, i want to come back to that in a minute yeah <laughs> And then um, the last one is communicate. So like uh, different, how you can think creatively uh, when you're communicating your ideas. So like the visual metaphor, you know, communicating your idea in a new way with a visual metaphor, a prompt for that. So yeah, so 10, 10 prompts total. So 
about the cover and the lightning bolt oh, yeah. and all that. I remember when we first started talking about this book, maybe about a year ago, a little more than that, I think. It was a different working title. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you were happy with it, but not thrilled. And then there was one time I got on a call with you, maybe, I don't know, sometime in the spring mm-hmm. or in the summer. And all of a sudden you were just so excited about what you wanted to title the book and the whole thing. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that process. Could it have been that there was part of the pro- the book itself involved in coming up with the, the title for the book or how did that happen? Oh yeah. How, what was the spark what for the, the spark? For the spark? The yeah. spark? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it, I was going to do data unboxed because mm-hmm. you, it was something data related and also that saying thinking outside the box Mm. and you were right like I kind of liked it but then you were like you said one day um that you thought data unboxed could mean maybe I'm describing what data is Mm -hmm. you know like inside like behind the scenes of what data is I'm like that's not even close to unboxing I'm gonna unpack something I'm gonna unpack data yeah I'm like well that's not even close to what Mm. I'm doing so like that's I can't do it that Mm -hmm. um so then I thought well I need just like two to three words that are going to describe to people immediately what it is. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to someone else and um, I was telling them about the title and she uh, just asked me like, what's it about? And Mm -hmm. as I was saying it, I said, spark, you know, like people, Mm -hmm. people just wait around, they wait around for the spark, the creative spark, the, the, the bolt of lightning. Mm -hmm. And um, then she was like, Oh, well, what if, you know, it, you you use the word spark in your mm. in your um, title. Oh, that's a good idea. So mm-hmm. I was like data spark. Mm-hmm. You know, I just like I I did a little list of words that like are data visualization mm-hmm. related, mm-hmm. and you know, chart spark actually sounds really nice to yeah. <laughs> with the AR AR mm-hmm. chart spark. And actually, the cover I once I thought of chart spark, I immediately knew I wanted to do a um, lightning bolt, and I did a I'll have to show you later but I did like a sketch of what it would look like and it's like a hand holding a lightning bolt because mm-hmm. I think that's like a symbol isn't it like a hand holding I've a lightning bolt a yeah. yeah and it's sort of like the Greek gods yeah yeah something. exactly and it's like on it's like holding the lightning bolt over a chart oh. and I showed it to my daughter and she was like why is that person stabbing the chart with a <laughs> lightning bolt it feels like that sometimes. Is that part of the process? Sometimes you take the thing you create and just stab it. <laughs> like that's not going to work. So I, um, but then like I was, I was working on it some more and uh, actually I got COVID uh, like two months ago and I yeah. had like this fever dream and like, I just kind of. No way. This. Yeah. Really? <laughs> sometimes it does just happen like that. But the thing is you do need to push the idea forward. I have found like brainstorm a little, push the idea forward take a break and then execute a little bit and then and and then then maybe something contract covid who knows what's coming out of it covid and then (laughs) have a fever i don't recommend that but um, not part of your process you recommend i did not put that in the book um but definitely definitely um let your ideas simmer a little bit because you might get the lightning strike but like you do need to be active in Mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. it, and um and you one of the things I remember as I remember you telling me about the idea for chart spark and the lightning bolt is you said what I love about it is like it's sort of like the idea of the lightning rod. You put it out there yeah. to bring the lightning to that spot. Yes. Instead of just sitting around waiting, going, I don't know, it's gonna strike somewhere somehow. I don't know where. Right. It's like, well, I'm gonna take some actions to try to do something to to direct that, Ex- to get that going exactly. in a certain place. You're not just waiting around, hoping yeah. I'm struck by lightning. It's like, well, I'm actually going to hold up a lightning yeah. rod right. and like attract, attract, attract the energy a to a certain place. More. Yeah. Where it's it, helpful. You, you still useful. might not get it, mm-hmm. but it's more likely. Right. So, yeah. so there's no guarantees, right? Yeah. 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 I wish I could guarantee. <laughs> right. Right. Because there's been times where you've tried to be creative and you're like, maybe just didn't end up getting yeah. anywhere. Yeah. 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 It's a process and it's not, it's messy too, but mm-hmm. um, I've tried to do put a lot of things that I've learned and things that I've learned from other people in my interviews on my podcast mm-hmm. into a book that people, people can use. Yep. All right. A question came through from Samuel. So he says, how do you manage your own creativity with the client's preferences, yes. especially when your approach as a, as a professional is better? Oh, yeah. so the <laughs> client is putting the kibosh on some great idea. Yeah. Um, maybe some constraints on the project mm-hmm. that really paints you into a corner. 
Yeah, I actually have a, a good chapter about that because that's a great point. So I found out this lesson the hard way because I a client asked me to do um, something and it was like a, a visualizing survey data. And he was like, oh, and I wanted to look cool on a t-shirt. So I was like, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Your ideas to see. Yeah, that so I, yeah. I did this like tessellated thing um, to show the proportion of uh, these different. Um, it looks like a concert t-shirt. Coding. Or yeah, it looked, it'd be cool on a t-shirt. I even mocked it up on a t-shirt and showed him. I thought it was like the coolest thing in the world. And it just, it's like goes, shows over time, like how it changes. I thought it was like so amazing. But then he wrote back pretty quickly and he was like, oh, that's nice. But that's not at all what we were thinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, he was like, oh, we were kind of thinking more traditional data. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's not cool on a shirt. Yeah. So the point is like, I, we were pointing at two different targets. Mm -hmm. Like he was thinking one thing when he said that. And I was thinking another thing when, um, when, when I heard him say that. Mm -hmm. So um, I actually did a chapter about like these four questions you should be asking your client or yourself and, or yourself to, to decide how, how um how much you should push the creative mm -hmm. idea because mm -hmm. you know you don't always have to be super creative you know a tessellated unit chart like he mm -hmm. i think he just wanted a line chart mm -hmm. <laughs> sounds like it yeah can you see a bar chart and stuff yeah so, so you like just fine so you're trying to like you're dialing in mm -hmm. how much do i go back and say hey can i ask you to think outside of yeah how outside of the that box perspective are we trying to do here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so it's like how much time does the reader of the graphic have so like if they don't have a lot of time mm -hmm. you're probably going to have to just go the most efficient route something that they don't have to be decoding like you know this fancy tessellated unit chart is going to take some time right so if someone's in a rush you probably want to lean more towards like just the tried and true stuff um, how much do I need to capture attention? So if there's something where, you know, scrolling on Twitter, or you need to ca ca capture mm. someone's attention, the usual bar charts probably not going to capture scroll someone's by attention. Yeah, yeah. So maybe in that case, we do need to lean more towards more creative things. Um, have there been struggles conveying this in the past? So if everyone just always gets it and, you know, you have the bar chart in the presentation, everybody gets it and they move on. Why are we why trying are we to reinvent the wheel here? To... Why we got to push Fix it? something that's not broken. Exactly. Uh -huh. So, but sometimes it's like, yeah, every time we put this up, everyone's confused. Everyone's confused. We got to nobody. Over. Nobody seems to care or has ever talked about it or takes note of it. Yep, it's not. Do you have working. a reason for saying, okay, here's a scenario in which we need to try to shake it up a bit? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yep. And then and that can be useful with the client or with the partner in the project to have a conversation about yeah, talk maybe about why this could be a time to mm -hmm. change things up a bit. Yeah. Okay. And then the last one is how much time do I, as the designer, have? Mm -hmm. so it's like, oh, oh sure. we need this tomorrow. Well, I don't have time to experiment then. No. Or if it's like, well, this is in six months. Like, okay, let me try. We have some time to try play with some test. different ideas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I talk about how you can ask these questions and rate yourself on mm -hmm. each one and then kind of that kind of gives you a feeling for how much you should be pushing it. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to be technical about it, you can like add up the numbers and then take an average. Oh, not, <laughs> then, so, hey, this is like a high creative index scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Want to call it where yeah. like creativity seems to be like a super big part of what we're tied to our success here. Uh, yeah, yeah. In my professional opinion. So uh, mm -hmm. Samuel, I think that's maybe would help you if maybe you can tell them, Hey, this is kind of what I'm thinking in terms of why we need to push the envelope here because mm -hmm. we need to capture attention. Our reader does have enough time to, to kind of decode maybe a slightly more creative visual. Um, and we haven't been able to successfully convey this in the past with our current methods. And mm -hmm. I have time to experiment, mm -hmm. you know, I'll test a few ideas out. We can see how they work. Um, and then that might convince them. Well, it's a dialogue. It, it might make them be more willing perhaps. Yeah. And if not, and they just come back and shoot it down, how do you manage that um, disappointment? Or yeah. maybe we should say like the, the feeling of constriction. Yeah. Well, there... I have kind of resigned myself, <laughs> I know that sounds sad, but resigned myself to every project is not going to be like the most amazing, creative, you know, mm -hmm. uh, satisfying, mm -hmm. uh, you know. They're not all masterpieces. Yeah, you're yeah. just not going to hit it out of the park every time. Mm -hmm. And it's actually 
pretty, pretty rare that it's like the client wanted it. You wanted it. You actually delivered. I mean, that's like the trifecta yeah. goal, right? But you know, it's not, it's not always going to happen. So um, just kind of lowering your, um, lowering your bar maybe of every project being, yeah. being good. And also I'm also a big proponent of just showing the client anyway. So maybe if you do have time, mm -hmm. you show them what they want. Mm -hmm. But it's like, also, I was experimenting and like, I I tried this thing. Like, what do you think? Or like sneak it mm -hmm. into the appendix and mm -hmm. see if somebody notices. Yeah, something out of left. I'm just going to give you a left field uh, example mm -hmm. just for fun. Yeah, maybe offering options. Like, here's what you asked for. Here's pushing it a little bit further or trying mm -hmm. something different. And then here's like this wild option right. where it's like I really pushed it and then maybe it lands maybe it doesn't you know a lot of people using chat GPT right now it's kind of like what's that that temperature rating you know so uh -huh. the temperature rating is a zero to one I think is sort of asking the chat bot to be more creative uh, or yeah. more consistent like a little bit more or yeah come up with something that's a little bit more on the fringes of what's you know what's um yeah start thinking a little wild so, well, here. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm giving you license to, to push sort it. of go crazy a bit. Yeah. Um, another question came through here. So you sketch a lot. Could you share a little bit about your sketching process? Oh yeah. Um, so I like to sketch on my iPad. And you've always been an amazing artist, right? Since yeah. <laughs> Which is funny. Yeah. Yeah. People do like to ask like, oh, you, were you like that kid who was always drawing? No, not at all. I was not. And I, I kind of picked up actually illustrating during um, the pandemic, just mm -hmm. to kind of, um, you know, ease some pandemic anxiety. Uh, but yeah, I was not, I'm not a good, like, I don't think I'm a good drawer. I think I figured out what my, what my, uh, uh, what's it called? Like, um, what I'm a little bit better at. So, mm -hmm. and then kind of like made my style to be, to, to suit that. But um, yeah, I guess, I think you're asking Samuel more about sketching ideas. Um, and I I like to really not have a expectation of okay I'm going to sketch something that's actually going to work. Mm -hmm. I'm more of thinking like um composition and shapes because mm -hmm. it's really important for the visual to work in however the final medium is going to be because you know, like in, in a book, there's a lot of constraints that you have, mm -hmm. uh, like it's going to have to be, you have more space long ways than wide. So if you think of this really cool, like 16 by nine mm -hmm. <laughs> visual, mm -hmm. like it's, it, you're going to have trouble putting it in a book. So thinking about what space do I actually have starting that? And then thinking about the composition there. Well, are people going to be able to zoom in? No. Okay. Well, the text is going to have to be really big. So let me make sure I have like blocks of showing like where my text is going to be. Um, so thinking about that in terms of letting the, the final medium mm. guide the sketching, that's kind of how I approach it. Mm -hmm. I hope that uh, answers your question. Yeah. And it kind of reminds me of the, you know, the, the constraint you run into sometimes with data where sometimes a certain chart type works well, but then other times the data changes and that chart type no longer works well. Uh, like yeah. the data might, I don't know, let's say you're looking at change over time and there's a whole bunch of lines that just cross over at the bottom and it's just practically, you can't really get any value out of it. It's just sort of something that doesn't really kind of give you any aha moment because of the shape of the data so it's almost like right. the scenario itself can kind of make a certain kind of thing in the world useful or not yeah Same thing yeah with... hugely yeah so uh, trying different chart types like maybe in a line chart the scale of some data is so high compared to some other categories so that's like, what i was thinking yeah, yeah you can't even see it's a frustrating the experience changes. yeah it's like, I, I can't even tell what's going on down there it's just all like spaghetti down there mm -hmm. Yeah. So then, yeah, so okay. Trying different shapes. And, right. Maybe and I can things. think about this in a different way. Yeah. So. Because that's what data is, 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 mm -hmm. you know, the, the shape, the encoding, how you're going to encode the variable, like what shape are you going to use? Are you going to use a dot? Are you going to use a line? Are you going to use area? So have, thinking about, thinking about the different shapes that are, that are possible. Question here from Chris, of all the prompts you share in the book, mm -hmm. do you have a favorite? Is there one you find yourself coming back to over and over again in your own work? Yeah, I think I think it was the CTR prompt that I shared my favorite one. Um, just because it's that was so hard for me at the beginning. I mean, it's still it's still a challenge. It's not like I figured it out, but it was just so hard for me. Like I got this, I, I shared the example in the book of um makeover Monday. I was doing that and they shared avocado prices mm -hmm. data. <laughs> 
this is like really struggling, like how to make this look interesting. And like, I'm going to do what everyone else is going to do, which is going to be like a line chart showing um, avocado prices over time. Yeah, yeah. Avocado. And here's organic and here's conventional. Oh, wow. Organic is more expensive than conventional. Everybody knows that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, like, do, be, so what? Yeah. So yeah. what? Mm-hmm. So what? And uh, that's the thing is like, we as data communicators, we want to create something that's different than everybody else, Mm -hmm. or at least like try to be, because we find it, at least for me, it's nice to be able to express yourself in a way with data, in a way that no one has ever seen before, or it's like slightly more, you know, just like a tiny tweak can make it a little bit more unique. And people are like, oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. That's meaningful. Mm -hmm. I want to do something, or I'm going to take some action because of that. We want that. We want to make an impact like that. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to do that if the data you have doesn't matter to you. Yeah, it's meaningless. And it's just like obvious. Like, where, where do I go? Where do I go with this? So I really like the CTR prompt because of that. Because so you hit a dead end, use a CTR prompt. Mm-hmm. So with the avocado prices, did, yeah. did it get you out of that? It did. What, yeah. So why do I care? Mindset? Yeah. So what I was thinking about was why. Um, so the obvious thing I started with obvious was that the avocado prices for organic is more expensive than um than conventional, which is obvious. And then the conflict, well, if that's, if that is true, organic is more expensive, then some people might not be able to afford afford it. it. And then why is that timely? Well, there might be a time where the price becomes um, close together. And that would be a good time to go make your guacamole. (laughs) So what could help, you know, going, finding that time where the, the, the difference is the smallest. So I ended up doing a uh, dumbbell chart showing the difference or so highlighting the difference between the two um, prices and showing, hey, here's the most March effective 20... time for organic guacamole yeah, of all time. Yeah, make that <laughs> organic avocados. Right eight, in time for March Madness. Expensive. Yeah, maybe it's right at um, <laughs> Super Bowl time, right? <laughs> so then it changed this like, hey, here's this obvious thing okay. about organics right. more expensive uh, now it's like meaningful to someone like oh uh-huh. maybe i'll go make my guacamole uh, uh, uh organic organic um, instead of like i would normally do to try to save money this is a time where it doesn't really matter that much yeah, yeah. so what you're trying to it sounds like with me to me that is kind of i remember early in my life learning just sort of like asking myself like what get to the heart of the matter here mm-hmm. you know like what is the reason why someone would be interested in this or care about it or want to pay attention to it. Yeah. So it's sort of in some way, a little bit more structure to that yeah. general idea. Yeah. Cause if you're just sitting there, why is this important? It's like, uh, maybe it's I not. don't know. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the answer is, well, in this moment, it's not. It's, so then maybe sometimes you might need to do the CTR prompt over and over again, you know, take a rest and talk to other people, like mm-hmm. gather, gather more information. Like I realized the library doesn't even collect the data that I was trying mm-hmm. to show. Mm-hmm. I had this great idea, but oh, you know, it's not even feasible. Yeah. For do it again. Do it again. Yeah. It just gives you something to do um, rather than wait around for a creative idea, which yeah. I like. I did have an experience once where I was presenting to a group and I think the individual worked for, they were creating dashboards for like a police department or something. Mm -hmm. And I was showing them some interesting ways to add. And they just came back and they said, nope, there's no way. If I did any of those things, they would immediately just say, we don't want to see any of that. We just want a bar chart. So Mm -hmm. it was an interesting experience of a person really feeling like they had no license to even take any kind of breath at all. So I guess maybe if you're a super creative person and you enjoy this process, mm-hmm. there might be a point in time where you say, well, I'm not sure if this rolls for me. Yeah, then, right? that's yeah. true. Like, I mean, some, some roles, they want you to play a part mm-hmm. and it's like, we don't really have an interest in you playing any other part. Mm-hmm. And maybe you try, maybe you do those things where you're like slightly pushing and slightly pushing right. and showing the things and it just doesn't work. It's going That's nowhere. normal. Yeah. I, I think that happens all the time yeah. and you might just need to maybe do personal projects so you can start building uh-huh. your portfolio uh-huh. and then you can find a job that does appreciate your creativity. <laughs> it's a good point. I mean, you know, we, sometimes we assume our job has to be like the be all and end all and accomplish and resolve every need we yeah. have. But yeah, there there can be other ways to, and I saw that when I was uh, with the Tableau public team that people were using this data software to do everything from like their favorite sports team to some cause they were championing with yeah. a marathon movies, they were running. Doing movies, like yeah. analyzing their own movie interests. Yeah. yeah. And just sort of seeing what else you can do with it in a project that has no constraints. That can be yes. a really refreshing sometimes. Okay. Jose says related 
Relating to those restrictions, would you have any advice on being creative in the context of scientific publications? Yeah. Actually, I, you had that book, right? So Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I did the the cover for Jen Christensen's book, Building Science Graphics, and that was, mm -hmm. he has, a, I would recommend that book for sure, because she- Building she, Science Graphics. Building Science mm -hmm. Graphics. She knows like ins and outs of- all the things. And one thing that she talks about is the welcoming gesture, which is just like, you know how for science graphics, it's like, well, here's, you know, just the basics. Like, here's what a molecule looks mm -hmm. like. And here's, you know, so if you were just being really scientifically accurate, if you don't really know that the molecule is the color blue, like you're not going to make it blue. <laughs> right. But she says, you know, with welcoming gestures, like maybe you do make it blue and maybe you look at some shading because it um, it makes it more interesting and visually engaging. It kind of like pulls you in. It's that welcoming gesture into a science article mm. that maybe you would just probably ignore if it was like a super dry graphic. So yeah, I would recommend her book because she talks about welcoming gestures really, really better than I could. And so the welcoming gesture being a thing you add to the graphic to basically pull someone into it. Yeah, it could be or... like an illustrative element, like maybe, um, you know, like what people would call chart junk, where, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like if it's a, a story, sketch. a story about leopards, maybe then you have like a beautiful illustration of a leopard at the mm -hmm. top. And so like every white space of the line chart or something. Yeah, or... maybe you add some story, like little anecdotes on the side or something, like mm -hmm. something that like it will pull someone into maybe a, a, a dry subject. Yeah, because I love it when those elements that you add do a lot of work for you as the chart creator in the sense that it conveys an idea or introduces to them the topic yeah. or helps them connect with the topic mm -hmm. in a different way. It's pretty to look at. Like that could value. Just that has value. It could just be aesthetically <laughs> pleasing. Right. And, oh, I love that sketch and it's neat. And then therefore, therefore now I feel kind of more interested in what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. it, it seems to me something that has more value in it in some way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Welcoming gestures. I never heard that term yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. Jen Christensen's. Uh, uh, what was the name of that book again? Building Building Science Graphics. And what was this, the story? With, so you designed the chart, the, the cover, cover there, the cover for just me, like yeah. yours. I think you've also designed. Well, yeah. for me, of course, yep. for Neil Richards, you designed his cover. Yeah, I guess I'm becoming a. a yeah, <laughs> but in this case, you got to write the book and design the cover. Yeah, yeah. Again, like you know, to me, that's what we. I mean, you know, be, not to gush, but here at Data Literacy, our little team, we love that about Ali. She's you're so kind of versatile, you know, ability to be highly data focused and analytical, also the ability to be very, not just creative, but even artistic. Yeah. And it's actually kind of encouraging to me to hear that skill. you didn't always yeah. feel like you were the artist in the room yeah. or the kid with like the creative flair with paint stains all over her t-shirt mm. or something. No, no, it's learnable. It's all learnable. And would you say, so it sounds to me like the iPad was a big part of that process yeah. for you. Is that, do you think that that's something you would recommend for someone in a technological or data-driven role? Or is it really just a matter of kind of where they happen to gravitate to? Yeah, if you do like illust doing illustrations or even feel like maybe that could be something you want, mm -hmm. I do feel like it's easier for me to make something that looks better, mm -hmm. looks good um, on the iPad mm -hmm. rather than just on paper or like actual paints, like that's much harder. Um, so if you do have, you even want to dabble a little bit in, in that, I would say maybe an iPad. And then what really pushed me forward is I did a hundred day project where I would design what I thought a data viz designer's wallpaper would look like wallpaper, throughout right. the years starting in 1920s. So I would take like the New Yorker cover from the 1920s so it could see the style mm. and try to emulate that on the iPad with something kind of data viz related. And doing one every day, that just really pushed my skills forward. So doing an iPad um, could work. And then uh, I don't think you really need it. Like if you just want to brainstorm, I would just say, a sketch pad pad of paper, is good, yeah. Pad of paper. I don't need to invest. Shangita is sharing something called excaladraw.com. Oh, never heard of it. Something either. to check oh. out. Yeah, thanks, Shangita. Yeah. Was there so was that that 100 day project? You, that means you sketch something every single day for 100 I, straight days. Yeah, I did. Was there any also like I don't know. Uh, what, what application are you using on? It's called uh, Procreate. Procreate, and okay. that's a pretty popular drawing mm -hmm. app. Um, and it's really cheap. It's like maybe 10 or. Twenty dollars as an application. Just, just to buy it, no subscription. Mm. Ah, wow! Well, well, you don't have to subscribe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah like, a, like a professional illustrator. They'll figure it out eventually. They'll add a subscription. Yeah, you watch. Out. You watch. <laughs> so, uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. Um, did you take a like a like a 
course to learn how to use it a ton of like youtube tutorials Ah, mm -hmm. just type in procreate how do you and there's i think i took some skillshare classes on procreate drawing and Mm -hmm. yeah and you can um and they weren't data specific courses no no, because it's very illustration oriented i don't think any really there's no capability specifically to do data in it Mm -hmm. i know people use it a lot to set things up like i use it to draw my infographics a lot Mm -hmm, um, and mm -hmm. then maybe like i'll take a bar chart and bring it in there so i can actually put the values where they're supposed to be so it's like accurate you started using figma a lot too yeah figma yeah so that's maybe a tool some of you have heard i've heard of it and i've seen it Mm -hmm. and of course you know you've used it for some of our projects i haven't really played around with it too much myself in that it's more for like layout and yeah i know some people are better at you know vector drawing uh, mm-hmm. than I am, but I find it easier to like hand draw things, but yeah, you yeah. can bring stuff into, into Figma for yeah, sure. Yeah. Different tools out there. So we'll have to check out, um, Excaladraw. Thanks again, Shane. Yeah. All right. So a couple minutes left here. So, um, you have a gift for them? Yes. Yes. Okay, so let's talk um, about that. <laughs> I did a bonus chapter and it's called specific scripts, what I would say in four creative situations. So I wanted to give you guys the, um, the bonus chapter. So like, if you are presenting something to a client, like what actually to say and how to accept negative feedback that mm-hmm. happens. Um, if you're trying to ask someone for information, like reaching out, like, uh, Hey, can I have an interview with you? Or like, um, asking them for advice, what to actually mm-hmm. say, or proposing a collaboration with someone. So you no know more overthinking it. I like, I give you a script. Um, and what do you think is the best way to share that? Because we I- can send that, of course, in the follow-up email. Oh, for sure. For sure. We will. Um, we'll send a follow-up email. Oh, and of course, if- for those of you watching the recording on YouTube, we will drop it in the description below. Oh yeah. And if you just want it now, it's chartsparkbook.com slash bonus. So, so we'll put that in the, in the, um, do the chat, right? I think the chat just goes to us. Yeah. That's what someone was saying up there. We got to fix that for next time. Um, so it's chartsparkbook.com mm-hmm. slash. Yes, you can bonus. download that. Don't download that. We'll put me. it in the chat in case on the off chance anybody's able to see it. <laughs> um, so this chapter, this is not in the book. No, not it's in not. The book. Okay. Bonus. But um, it picks up on a lot of, and it sounds like it's really just you saying, okay, here are some exact examples you can. Yeah, just a, a exact script on what what you, you know, adjust it for yourself, of common, course. And your common situation. scenarios that pop up. But yeah. Here's, and exactly how you handle it. Yep, exactly. Cool. All right. Well, what's next with Chart Spark? I know we get the book out. We're doing the webinar to talk yes. about it. Just getting started. What do you think is where, where are we going to go with it? I, I think I want to do some workshops mm-hmm. around it, like really specific things. Well, if if you're procrastinating on a project, maybe mm-hmm. like let's do a quick 45 minute webinar or um, you know an hour workshop where mm-hmm. we kind of get past the breakthrough. Um, some, yeah, like some let's brainstorm block. together kind of a thing. So yeah, workshops. I want to record an audio book because I oh, know yeah. like audio book people. Oh, that's right. Oh, audio book for sure. And then also we're actually going to be even doing some recording here while you're in town. Oh yeah, for a course. And we'll yeah, put we're a doing little on demand course, course yes, out there. Course, some people yeah. like watching video is better than reading. I'm a reader, but uh but yeah, we'll do that too. So find new ways to get this idea and these contents kind of package it up and put out there for people. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I love that idea. I mean, it's since you've got here, we were just chatting yesterday, we had the, the team in town here and talking about what's coming for us in, in the coming year. And yeah, the idea of transformational workshops seems to me to be yeah. a really valuable one, like small bite-sized little time you can spend with the with the author, with the, the course creator and get something specific done. Yeah, yeah. try to get, get past a a roadblock for yourself. Mm -hmm. Sounds like there were some questions about sketching and such there too. So maybe there could be some things around Mm -hmm. doing those kinds of. Yeah. How to sketch ideas. And do you have, do you do business drawing or visual thinking? Uh Oh, the last question, then we'll wrap it up. Yeah. Interesting. Business drawing. Business drawing. To me, business drawing. I mean, well, of course, Allie does a lot of diagrams she did sketches in her book you can see in her book there's the sketches that she actually drew out but for all of my books and courses at this point going forward and even going back to some of the ones we're redoing and refreshing and revamping Allie is the one creating the diagrams creating the so that's not really a chart per se it's more like an arrangement of ideas maybe in some kind of a framework yeah exactly I would to me I would call that business drawing so I think it ends up more in like a, it looks more like a, it doesn't look like a sketch style, although it obviously could be. It could, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I think you're right. It's just like explaining a concept in a visual way, a business concept. But you read it on logo. So, yeah. you know, those are some things that probably fall under the category of like just graphic arts for 
for corporate for corporations, mm-hmm. business drawing, maybe I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, visual thinking. I even in our meeting yesterday, I was watching you sketch some of the ideas and questions we were having. Mm-hmm. And I could tell you're a lot of arrows, a lot of things moving around on the yeah, page. Yeah, that's uh, helpful for me to kind of mm-hmm. see it, see it. So yeah, I guess I do 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 that. Um, but uh, facilitating meetings with that kind of stuff mm-hmm. would be really, maybe that could be like a transformational workshop, like how to run a kind of visual thinking kind of meeting mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with these prompts. Yeah, kind of arranging the ideas in space in a way that helps people relate to them. And yeah. that's really at the end of the day. And the reason why I thought about the diagrams in my books is because that's sort of what I'm trying to do is help explain an idea. Right. And then Ali's coming in saying, well, here's maybe a better way to draw that or lay that out or sometimes just making it look cooler. Cause you know, I don't know. That's worth it. <laughs> yeah, I totally, I absolutely. I mean, absolutely. <laughs> um, all right. So we are out of time. That's a full hour, but yeah. And it's, I agree with Shingy to your sketches are very helpful. I mean, <laughs> one of the reasons why, of course we hired Ali, but w- we were working with her long before creating comic <laughs> strips for us, you know, just really fun stuff. So I think it's just a great way to bring life to what we're doing, to make it colorful, to make it interesting and to make people smile mm-hmm. when they learn something or, or uh, interact with data in some way. So it doesn't have to be so boring. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah yep. All right. So first book under the belt. Next yes. one, maybe we'll see. We got a lot of work to do here, but thank you everyone for joining. Yeah, I hope you great. really enjoyed this. And um, and yeah, anything else you want to close with, Alex? So that's it. Book you found Pick up the useful. book. I would get, love to see it. Get the bonus chapter. Yep. And then yep. we're off and running. All right. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Take care, have everyone. Yep. Bye now. Bye. Happy holidays. <laughs>